As of the 1st of April 2011, South African consumers became some of the most protected in the world. This due to the implementation of extremely progressive legislation. Fatih Manamela, who's Chief Director at the Gauteng Consumer Office, and Candace Holland, who's Associate Director at Deloitte Legal, join us now for more detail on this. Uh, thanks to you both for joining us uh, this morning. Let's perhaps start off with you, Candace, and your view on just how effective something like the Consumer Protection Act has been. Because as I said in the intro, we say that we've become amongst the most protected consumers in the world. Are we really? So the Consumer Protection Act really is sort of forf at the forefront of consumer protection. And you're right that it's about the implementation. So there has been some stumbling stones in the beginning of trying to implement the Consumer Protection Act. I think the regulator is going to take a couple of years to find its feet. We find this with most regulators. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual. Um, but I think we have made huge progress in protecting consumers because people are for once aware of where to go and look up their rights. It's all consolidated in one piece of legislation. It is the simplest for people and consumers to know what am I entitled to as a consumer. Are they aware enough, Fatih, in your books? Not enough, and I don't think it's going to be enough anytime soon. Um, we have just to go out and try and create awareness to members of the public and sort of come up with some consumer education initiatives. Mm -hmm. Um, we did a study in Gauteng, I think, three, four years ago, and we found out that at least 20% of the population of Gauteng have gotten aware of their rights and uh, the existence of the Consumer Affairs Office, and we are trying to actually come up with other measures to actually you know, create some kind of interventions where people would actually get more exposed to your consumer rights and the, the, their responsibilities through education programs, through awareness and advocacy. To what extent is, it, uh, is the issue having to do with education and the lack of it out there? And to what extent is it that we're just complacent as South Africans? Because I've heard that uh, being said time and time again. I, th I think there is an element of complacency. We do not complain enough as the South African population. Um, and it, I mean that goes back to you know the level of sophistication that we have of consumers within different LSMs, and also I mean even the affluent group of people in, in the in the country are not necessarily um, complaining enough. And then I think there is that kind of an element of you know not wanting to actually complain and you know attending to those complaints at the shop floor because yeah. that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, you, if you give enough information, enough education, you empower co co consumers to actually um, uh, start to lodge those complaints as and when they actually you know, get into contact with you know, some form of uh, uh, problems in the market. A lot of that complacency though, um, Candice, is derived from the fact that there's a lot of red tape that you've got to uh, deal with in, in bringing your issues to the fore and you know, addressing some of the rights that you have as a consumer and also the bureaucracy that uh, goes with you know having to deal with issues when you when they do arise uh, to what extent can we start making things a little simpler so i think i think the national consumer commission have gone a long way to trying to do this you know in terms of the regulations to the consumer protection act it's actually pretty easy to to lodge a complaint there's a simple form that you'd fill out and post off with some supporting documentation it's it's once it reaches the offices where it needs to be processed where potentially i think there's been a couple of hiccups mm -hmm. um, and as i I, I don't think that will be forever. It's a period of time. This happens. But the intention purely of the, of the legislators was to try and make this process as easy as possible. So I think the intention is there. It's possibly the follow through that's, that's been a bit problematic. What are some of the most prominent emerging issues amongst consumers right now in your books? Well, I know we did a little bit of a study around the sale of uh, second hand motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. Um, across you know the entire you know the country uh, because we meet you know in the consumer protection forum mm -hmm. as provinces and as the national consumer commission and other statutory regulators we have found that there's a lot of complaints around you know the sale of motor vehicles especially in the second hand you know goods market and, uh, and other you know communications related problems like you know cell phones you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, home improvements. So they, they, they have actually been categorized, you know, in the, you know, what is in the, in the upper list of, of the, the, the number yeah. of complaints that we actually get. But I think in, in the main, um, motor vehicles are uh, 
very big. Motor vehicles, a, a, a big thing, Candice, but also uh, cell phones, as Fatih highlighted there. And a lot of that having to do with the fact that uh, when consumers purchase cell phones, they're venturing into long-term agreements. Half of those agreements or half uh, of the agreement that you, you're signing not being read in the first place. Uh, you know, you're entering in most instances to long, into long-term contracts uh, with these firms, you know, whether it be Celsi, Vodacom, MTN. Yeah. Uh, is that a problem in terms of consumers not paying enough attention to the legalities of contracts that they're entering into, not taking it seriously enough? Absolutely, and I think there's responsibility on both sides. So yes, you know, business needs to simplify those agreements make them readable and, and user friendly but by the, by the same token the consumer must read it you know we, we often think oh fine print squeeze through it and, and, and initial you, you need to actually read it and take responsibility for what you're signing as well. A lot of those contracts well. though are pretty standard so whether you're going to an MTN, a Vodacom or a South Sea you're getting pretty much the same kind so mm. how much control do you actually have in terms of you know mm. what you have because it's either that sign the paper or not get a cell phone contract. <laughs> Absolutely, and it does still sometimes feel like the power is still in the hands of business, which the Consumer Protection Act was, was, was to try and to, to redress. Um, but, but yeah, it's difficult because, because they, they, they do sometimes say, well, you know, sign it or else. But we've seen a lot of businesses, and we consult a lot to business, to actually coming to the party and saying, right, what should we be doing in this space? You know, the Consumer Protection Act was drafted a, a, along the lines of what is fair for both sides. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a one-sided piece of legislation. So, so there is responsibility, and, and I would urge consumers to challenge what is in the document. But, but to do that, you actually have to read it and, and take cognizance of what's in there. Well, Fatih, we've had some solutions coming to the fore. We've had uh, to stumble our way through a few hurdles along the way as well. But overall, how are you rating the kind of progress we're making in uh, when it comes to uh, cons uh, consumer protection? There, there is some progress. And I think what gives us comfort is the enactment of the Consumer Protection Act, because it generally codified you know, the common law. You know, the whole issue relating to refunds, you know, exchange mm -hmm. of commodities that you actually purchased, the repairs and all those warranties that actually come with it. I think that gives us a little bit of, you know, somewhere to start at. But we just need to actually venture out into the members of the public and try to educate them as much as possible about this act and, and see to it that it actually lives. The, the, the one other point is um, consumers should also be responsible mm -hmm. uh, in as much as they've got rights. Uh, because it takes two to tango. Uh, on the one side, you read, you understand. If you don't understand, take it back and, and try to get some kind of good understanding about a particular clause. Likewise, the, the business has got to actually highlight areas where they think consumers are not in a position to understand. And, and at least try to explain that this, what this term actually means and that these are the consequences that will actually flow yeah. if the term is not actually being well, complied with. Well, let's leave it there for today. Thank you both for joining me in sure. studio this morning. Fatih Man uh, Manamela is Chief Director at the Gauteng Consumer Office and Candice Holland is Associate Director at Deloitte Legal.